Um, so it's not really morning anymore. It's about noon and I'm about to get in the shower so we can go get Piper. Well, so <laughs> Aiden woke up this morning. He seems totally fine. I fed him. I got him dressed for school and like the whole time I'm getting him dressed like I'm smelling something kind of foul. Like I just didn't know what it was because he wasn't poopy. Like I just couldn't really figure it out. So I got him out. I got him dressed and I set him like that's up beside the bed and I go to move out his blankets because every morning after I feed him I take his blankets and I fold them and I drape them over his bed well when I moved his blankets I found a huge pile of vomit not a huge pile but there was some 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 throw up in his bed and uh, I was just like man oh no like I and I couldn't tell because if it happened early this morning like I wouldn't know if he like threw up due to sickness or if he threw up due to the regurgitation so I wasn't sure he didn't really feel warm to me but he seemed very like leave me alone you know like I could tell he was in that leave me alone mode like he wants to be by himself he's having a day where he doesn't want anybody near him um, and I try to cuddle him and like hold him and he's like oh like he's pushing me away like he doesn't want he does not want cuddles at all um, so I was like okay so I just made a judgment call and I kept him home today sometimes you just gotta but he he's done really well he he doesn't still doesn't really want me to cuddle him or anything but he's just been like wandering around the house and he's been perfectly happy um i just put him back in uh, piper's old room because i'm about to get in the shower and i want to make sure he's safe while i'm in the shower but i did want to come in and start the vlog um before i actually got in the shower y'all last night i didn't do anything to my kitchen after we had cleaned downstairs like I, I was done <laughs> we had worked so hard yesterday um, and I don't know when I'm gonna get it done I guess after the kids I don't even know though because we've got to go like right after the kids get off the bus we uh, my uh, my husband's grandmother was in a car accident she's okay she just has some some minor bruising and like some broken ribs and whatnot which I mean when you're old when you're an older person that can be severe but she's been pretty miserable so my mother-in-law picked her up and brought her over like into town to stay with them while she recovers and we're gonna go over tonight and um, have dinner with them and just kind of hang out for just a little bit um, I don't think she can handle a lot so we're not gonna stay very long but it means kind of getting you know going over there right after the kids get off the bus so anyway yeah yeah, that's the day so far. Oh, and some of you guys are asking in, in yesterday's vlog, y'all were like, your kids go to bed at 6 or 6.30? Why? Yes, they do. They go to bed at 6 or 6.30. Yes, every night, 6 or 6.30. Um, and it's not like my husband and I are like, you have to go to bed now. It's 6 o'clock. Like, no, it's not like that. If they wanted to stay up, our, the bedtime technically is 8 but my husband and I can always judge how tired they are, when they need to go to bed, and almost every night it's at 6 or 6.30. They need to be in bed by then. That's just the way my kids are. Even the boys, like everyone, and you guys aren't the only ones. Like I have friends and <laughs> people think we're crazy. They're like a normal bedtime for a child that age is 7.38. You know, like I know that, but my kids, they get in bed and they're, they're asleep at 6 or 6.30 and they sleep through the night until about 6.37 the next morning. Uh, except the girls. The girls, no matter when I put them to bed, they're up at 6 or 6.30 regardless. So I don't know. I think that especially the girls, they take after me. I've always been the type of person who just needs more sleep than most. Like my body just does not function on less than eight hours of sleep. That's just the way it is. Um, and I think the girls are like that too, because we used to put them to bed at eight and they, like I would always have to go down and get them out of bed and all this kind of stuff. But putting them to bed at six, they get enough sleep. They're rested for the whole day. It's just, it's just a good time for our family. I'm not saying you guys have to do, that you guys are putting your kids to bed too late or anything, but um, 
you know, we just, that's a time that works great for our family. So we do it six o'clock, six or six thirty, And we don't hold fast to it. Like tonight, for instance, they won't get to bed at six because we won't be home probably till seven or seven thirty, And that's okay. That's not a big deal. Um, it's not like a mandatory, you have to be in bed at six kind of thing, but yeah, I don't know. They all, they all just go to sleep at six and we don't complain. Um, I think as they get older, that's going to slowly change. It's already starting to change a little bit with Zoe. Zoe would definitely prefer to stay up till seven, which is why we've kind of moved the bedtime to 637, like really 637 <laughs> is when they go to bed. But uh, sometimes we do get them in bed by six. I don't know, they're just exhausted by then. Our kids are weird, y'all. Anyway. I have so much. I've been cleaning out the pantry. I have like all these empty cereal boxes. Y'all have a lot of work to do. <laughs> this little boy, y'all. He found the ladder to one of the girls' dolls' bunk beds. He's playing with it. Pop it! I need to give him a, a, a B-A-T-H before we leave, though. She went outside. She's all right in her case. She was grabbing her little fishy off of the rock. <laughs> What'd you get? Your fishy? Alright. It got wet. Fish! Whenever it rained. Yeah. And then it got wet. <laughs> Alright, y'all, go play. Alright, y'all, so I just printed out a ton of paperwork for the home study. I, it's okay. I am so frustrated. We, so, in order to, you know, complete the home study, we have to have um, doctor's appointments. Like, we have to have medical exams. Of course, I understand this. This is normal, no, not a big deal. The problem is all of the papers that are filled out by the doctor, meaning the boy's doctor and the girl's doctor and my husband and I's doctor. There, you're good, go play. Um, has to be notarized, which means we need a notary republic to come with us to the doctor and uh, Hello guys, so in tomorrow's vlog, you guys are going to see me, same shirt, sitting in the same place, chatting a lot, and I just realized that I didn't film hardly anything yesterday. It wasn't intentional. I filmed a little bit, but I had intended to film like more when we went to dinner with the family, and I left my camera at home, so I'm sorry. Um, I hate that. I, I like to make the vlogs at least 10 minutes. Like, I don't like the vlogs to be less than 10 minutes, but sometimes they just are. Sometimes it happens. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's just, it's just life. So anyway, I wanted to answer a few questions for you guys since the vlog is super short. I thought I would just throw this clip in to yesterday's vlog, um, and get a few questions out of the way for you guys. Uh, so I just asked, I just asked my Facebook group, if you guys are not on my Facebook, you need to go check it out. It's just truly blessed with four littles. It's easy to find. Um, I do a lot of updates on there that maybe you guys wouldn't get in the vlogs. So I'm just going to go through here. I just posted the question. I just said, hey, um, I had some filming issues yesterday. I need some questions for an impromptu Q&A. Go. So I did that like 10 minutes ago and I've already got like 12 of you guys asking questions. So I'm just going to go down the list. Um, I'm sorry if some of these have already been previously answered, but I assume if these people are asking the question, um, then they probably don't know. And if they don't know, then there's probably more of you who don't know. So I'm going to go on down the list. Let's see. Anji asked, do you do therapy with Aiden and what type? Yes, we do do therapy with Aiden. Um, we do a lot of water play therapy, um, a lot of hands-on therapy. Um, really, the therapy with him lately has just consisted of a lot of cuddles and trying to get him to repeat words and um, giving him a lot of different manipulatives, like uh, toys that play music or make sound. Um, sound and you know letting him recognize what sound <clears throat> what sound is what I guess like matching a sound with a word like this sound is a duck the sound is a cat and that's that kind of thing my nose is stuffy y'all I'm sorry if I keep sniffing um let's see Brittany asked oh hey Brittany <laughs> you'll need to go check out Brittany's channel by the way um sharing our life I love her channel she does a lot of uh she does like some day in the life, and then she does some, um, some recipe videos and she just does a, like a nice mix. She does a nice mix of videos and I really like her channel. So y'all need to go check her out. Um, let's see. 
She said, what did or do you find the most difficult about adoption as an adopted child and as a parent that adopted? Um, it's the most difficult about adoption. The most difficult thing about adoption, <laughs> it sounds silly, but it was the paperwork to get there. Um, just all of the legwork that it took to get to to get the boys home um, and also being in country for as long as we were. That was really difficult. It was just all consuming for such a long time. And I remember the last time we, we were adopting, like I didn't vlog hardly at all. Like I basically disappeared from YouTube for about a year. So I'm determined not to do that this time. Um, and what do I find most difficult as a parent, as a parent that adopted, as an adopted child? <laughs> I don't understand the question. Okay, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna get this. Hold on, give me one second. Let me Let me comprehend for just a moment. So as an adopted child, um, I think it's just a matter of knowing, knowing how they're going to feel later on in life. You know, they're always, they're going to be curious later on in life about, um, where they came from and why their birth parents, you know, gave them up and all of that kind of thing. I think more so Narky is than Aiden. I don't think Aiden will probably, he will probably never ask those specific questions. I don't know. He could, but, um. I think it's just like curiosity because I, as an adopted child, as I got older, I got really, really curious. And when I was 16, I actually like started digging through drawers in my house because my, my adoptive mom, I love her to death. Love her. She is my mom. Like she is my mom, but, uh, she didn't really want to tell me a whole lot about my birth family. So I got really curious and I started going through drawers in our house and I found all of my like records and all of this kind of thing. And I started researching and then I started Googling things that I was finding and I found my birth mother like on my own when I was 16 and uh, I met her without my mother even knowing. So from that, I would say that I personally would not want to have any secrets with my children. I wouldn't want them to ever feel like they had to sneak off, you know, to go find out about their family history. Um, I would want to be a part of it. And uh, my mother later, after I told her that I had found my birth family, she uh, she had wished that, she, you know, she had been a little bit more supportive. But I was just scared. I was 16 and I was scared to tell her or, you know, I don't know. I just thought she would flip out or not have a very good reaction to me finding them, um, because, um, they, they have chosen a hard life for themselves. I will just say that my birth family, that is, let's see. Emma asks, how long did your first adoption take? Um, one year from the time we started our home study till the time the boys were at home. It was one year. Um, Let's see. Sarah asks, what made you want to adopt special needs children instead of non-special needs children? Well, as I said before, um, in a, quite a few other vlogs, we, uh, we never wanted to adopt special needs. Like that was never like the protocol for our family, but, um, you know, God just molded our hearts and changed our hearts and, you know, gave us, gave us a heart for these children. And it started when we hosted a few um, Ukrainian orphans, um, three summers ago. And, uh, or not three summers, three Christmases ago. And they weren't even in our home very long. They were only with us, I think maybe three, three days maybe. Um, but after that we went and we volunteered down at the camp and there were a lot of, you know, Ukrainian orphans down at this camp that they had brought over to give like a Christian experience and hopefully find families for. And they just really touched our hearts. So from there, we just went home and we were researching. And then when we found Reese's rainbow, that is when God opened up our eyes to special needs children and um, just the plight of orphans and just what they go through on a daily basis. And of course, every child deserves a family, whether they have special needs or not, but specifically the children with special needs um, in these orphanages or rather institutions are just horribly, horribly mistreated. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Lily asks, how did you and your husband meet? Um, we met when we were 15 and 16 years old. We met on the internet, on AOL Instant Messenger, way back in the day. <laughs> and uh, it turned, we met through a mutual friend. He wasn't just some random person, but um, a, a mutual friend had kind of, you know, put us together and given me his, his screen name. And uh, <laughs> we talked for a while and then when we were 15, we decided we we're like, we need to meet. Let's go to the flea market. Because when you live in the South and you're 
you're a country bumpkin, that's where you go to have fun is the flea market on the weekend. So we met at the flea market and we just, we've been together ever since. Like I just, we've never been apart, you know, and I, I, I wouldn't say that young love is common. I wouldn't say that young love happens for everybody. And honestly, looking back at it, if as a parent now, if my daughter, one of my daughters came home and said, hey, mom, I'm engaged to be married and they were only 17, I would probably have a legit panic attack because that is crazy young to me now that I'm looking back at it. But you know what? We were young and we were in love and we knew within the first six months of dating, my husband knew right away, <laughs> but we knew within the first six months of dating that we were going to be together forever. Um, and I don't think that that's common and I don't think that happens all the time. And you know, I think it's easy for a lot of adults to look at kids like we were and say, oh, they're so stupid. You know, they're just young and it's just puppy love and it's going to pass. And But it wasn't that way for us. Uh, and we knew that. So uh, we d started dating at 15. And uh, when we were 18, well, I was 17. We were technically we were both 17. Um, we got engaged <laughs> to be married when we were 17 years old. We had not even graduated high school yet and we were engaged to be married. Everyone thought we were crazy. Our teachers were shaking their heads. You know, we went to a Christian high school and they were shaking their heads at us like, oh, it's never going to last. You guys are going to end up getting a divorce and you know, blah, 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 this kind of stuff. And I think our friends were pretty supportive. Our, our friends were pretty supportive, but um, yeah, we did. It, it worked out. It worked out. I love that man just as much as the day I met him. So, and we're going strong. We have our 10 year anniversary, um, next year. Wait, six, I have to count six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It might be, it's 10 years this year. It is, it's 10 years this year in December. We will have been married 10 years. All right. Let's see. How old is Aiden when when and when is his birthday? Aiden is currently eight years old. His birthday is May the 20th. Um, the boy that is available to adopt with Priscilla. Oh, I'm sorry. And Alicia asked that question. And Maria asked, the boy that is available to adopt with Priscilla, is he her brother? If not, how are they connected? I'm glad you asked this question. I get this all the time. Um, so a lot of you, when you go to the Reese's Rainbow website, like if I post the link or I show you where, you know, Priscilla is listed, you go look at it. It says under Priscilla's name that Priscilla can also be adopted with a little boy named Lewis. However, if you look at other children um, listed, most of the time they have other kids. Like they say like this child can be adopted with this child, this child, and this child. It doesn't mean that they're siblings. They are in no way blood related. What that means when you see that on Reese's Rainbow is it means that those children are in the same orphanage or those children are in the same region. Um, when you are adopting internationally, for financial reasons, it is easier and more financially frugal if you adopt two children from the same orphanage. You don't have to pay two facilitation fees or any anything like that. Um, so that's why they say that. They like to give uh, prospective families um, the option to adopt multiple children if they so choose. So all that means is that the little boy Lewis is in the same orphanage as prospective is blah, blah, can't talk. <laughs> He's in the same orphanage as Priscilla. Um, it doesn't mean that they're siblings. They are not related. I, I checked, <laughs> but they are not related. Um, so that is what that means. I do get that question a lot. Let's see. Stephanie asks, how long until Narkees returns to school? Where he's, we're hoping to get his pens removed in the next couple of weeks, and then it will be an additional month after that before he can return. Um, Bethann asks, there are a couple of questions in the private message I just sent you. I'm not on my private message. I'll answer those in a minute. Um, Hannah asks, what's been one of the greatest challenges of raising a little boy who is autistic? Um, honestly, just getting used to it and understanding his preferences. Uh, with a child who's autistic, they always have, you know, their own little quirks and their own little um their own little preferences that they like and things that will calm them down and make them happy. And the biggest challenge has just been learning what those are for Aiden. And I feel like now at this point, we we're kind of there, you know, like we get it, we understand. Um, 
So it's easier now. And Bethann, I'm sorry, I'm on my phone. I, I do have the Messenger app installed on my phone for Facebook, but I have it installed for my personal account, not my YouTube account. So I'm sorry, I can't check the personal messages right now and my computer is dead <laughs> or I would, I would check. So I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to answer those questions in this video. But that is all I got right now. I don't wanna go back through and I, I'm sure if I refreshed it, there would be more. Let me see. I don't want to make this too long. Man, this is already 12 minutes. I feel like this is going to be even longer than a normal daily vlog. I should probably shut up. Let's see. All right, I refreshed it. I got a few more. Um, te tez Tezra? Tezra, is that your name? That's a pretty name. Um, what are Aiden's best and worst times of the day? Oh, gosh, it varies. It could be any... It could be any time. <laughs> um, usually he's really happy in the mornings. Um, sometimes, like yesterday, he had a rough morning, but I don't know. I see more um, more problem, problem areas probably around 11 to 1 o'clock. I don't know if that's because it's around lunch. I don't know if it's because it's midday and he's getting sleepy um, and he maybe needs a nap. I don't know what it is, but usually between 11 and 1 is his rough hours, um, and the rest of the time he's usually pretty happy. 90% of the time he's happy with me. He doesn't usually give me a lot of trouble at all. Uh, Let's we'll see, Julie asks, what are all the children's favorite foods? Narkees likes chicken, and Narkees likes pizza. <laughs> um, basically any kind of American junk food Narkees is a fan of. Um, Piper's favorite food is celery, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, carrots, and... Um, bananas. So that is Piper's favorite. Zoe really likes, um, she likes noodles, like the little spicy noodle things, like the ramen noodles. <laughs> um, she really likes crunchy peanut butter sandwiches. She loves string cheese and, uh, Pringles. Those, that's Zoe's current fix. It, it changes too. You know, what their favorite food this week may not be their favorite food next week. Um, and Aiden really likes um, his mashed potatoes and peanut butter. <laughs> that is his favorite food and his Ensure. Uh, and then Caitlin asks, how is Narkees after surgery? He's doing awesome. He still has a little bit of a road to recovery, um, but he's doing very well. He's doing wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm kind of dreading him getting the pens taken out because it's going to make him hurt a little bit more, but it's okay. This is his last surgery, y'all. After this surgery, he should not need anything else. I'm going to go ahead and end this because this is getting to be a good 15-minute q and I'm sorry. It's a little long. I may have to make cuts. I don't know. But uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow, and I hope you guys are all doing awesome. Bye, guys. Though the way sleep, soft shall we sleep, ocean's roll. Do you?